Fred's a macromaniac. <laughs> <laughs> so to put it, I am. I admit it. <clears throat> it sounds better than flower maniac, right? Well, I can't help it. I like yeah. to photograph small things, and it's insects and plants and flowers. Me too. And I've been doing it for quite some time. And uh, we showed uh, in, I think it was the previous podcast, how you can use an LED light as a supplement. Right. For uh, Because basically it's better to block out the sunlight when you're doing this uh i've got something that i came up with that i wanted to kind of show you here this little arm here look at this is a lytra which you could use any little mm -hmm. led you want to make sure that it's these little arms i think they call this the magic arm are under 15 bucks this is the seven inch model they do make an 11 inch model which is a couple dollars more the trouble is, I think the 11 inch model might actually extend out enough where the weight might be a little much for it. I believe on this particular model, and I'm going to get that to here a little bit, you could probably also use a smaller flash on here as well as uh, an LED light. But I'm going to turn this on momentarily. This is so you don't need an extra hand. As you can see, that uh, we'll put the light right down in there where you want it and give you some nice supplement light on your for that amount of money I mean that's really something that I thought was kind of clever and doable this has a lot of other purposes too you could put a little monitor up there I mean there's a number of things you could use it for right just nice because you could put it right on the hot shoe so yeah pretty cool. so I wanted to kind of show that off and we was going to talk about various macro lenses for um, kind of a comparison one I'll let you start well you've got the, we the both Tamron. we both have a nice uh, stabilized macro lens mm -hmm. I have the Tamron 90 and um, I like it it's a good lens well I want to mention my first macro lens that I bought was a Tamron 90 and um, it was an earlier model didn't have uh, image right. stabilization in it but the very first picture I took with it, it was out in our backyard here. It was a Jadera bug and a golden rain tree blossom, and it got picked up and published in Outdoor Photography Magazine. Mm. Those are really, really sharp, good lenses. So, but, um, I mean, I like this lens. It's, mm -hmm. It works. Bottom line with it is that there's a lot of them out there. Canon makes them. Uh, I'm sure their Nikkor version of the macro, uh, of course, Sigma. And the Tamron it. will fit on uh, the, they make versions for Nikon as well as Canon and right. other. Well, the nice brand, thing about I the third party is they make Sony. them for just about anybody. Sony, yeah. uh, probably uh, Olympus version, uh, definitely Canon version. So, yeah, it's, it's a situation where it's a solid little lens. It's fairly lightweight, though. And uh, I like the way it works. Basically... It has the stabilizer. It has, of course, your automatic and manual uh, focusing. And it actually has three settings, full, and then the 0.5 to infinity, and then 0.3. Uh, so what they call a 0.3 to 0.5. And I want to meter. mention, too, that this is a true macro lens. So yes. this is true. And what macro means is that the image that appears on the sensor when it's in focus is at least the same size as the object you are photographing. So if you're photographing a postage stamp, that picture of a postage stamp on the sensor would be the same size as the real postage stamp or larger on the sensor. So right. that's a, the same size as one-to-one -one ratio. So a true macro is at least one-to-one. -one. Right. And, of course, the other thing I like about macros is that in many cases, such as this one, 2.8, aperture so mm -hmm. it really allows you to get the light in there mm -hmm. because a lot of times when it's no you know the light's too harsh for photography out in the field i'll then put on my macro lens and start looking for uh shots of opportunity for that do you Small have a, a general price range that the tamron mm -hmm. these run a little over seven hundred dollars uh, uh, want to bring out one more thing brand new. too those of you who attend the black hills photo shootout We'll probably get an opportunity, we're assuming Tamron will be there again this year, to borrow one of these and give it a try. I know I did uh, at the last workshop, when one of the macro classes I taught, right. that I borrowed a uh, Tamron macro lens. They're really great lenses. 
Well, what macro lenses do you have well, to show us the there? The one Jim? I've got right here is one that came. I'm going to go ahead and take the little arm off it here. Okay. Now, oh, by the way, that just fits on the hot shoe of the camera. This is the Sigma macro lens. And like the Tamron, it's got uh, image stabilization. It actually has two different settings. One is all ways, and there's a number two setting that apparently only works for up and down. I believe it doesn't do the horizontal. It's one you probably rarely use, or you can switch it off completely. So if you're using this on a tripod, you might want yeah, to Yeah, definitely turn it for off. both. If you're on a tripod, you probably want to turn off stabilization because yeah. the poor thing gets fooled after a while. Autofocus. It's waiting for movement, and it's not seeing it. And it's an ultra an USM motor for focusing, so it's, you can turn the focus on or off. And um, it also, which is interesting, has three different settings for the focusing range, which is infinity to, uh, let's see, it was a, a 0.45 meters, so it's about half a meter. And the second setting is a, uh, let's see, that's a well, full, then four and a half meters to infinity and then 0.32 meters to four and a half meters. So if you know your range is going to be really, really close, you're using it as a macro, it'll prevent that hunting. Right, you don't get the hunting. Right, so that is a nice feature. There is a couple things that I didn't find the stabilization to be that impressive. I mean, I barely notice any kind of, when it kicks in, like some of my other lenses that you can see that, that when it does it practically stops. I mean my Canon 100 to 400 which has got a four stop um, stabilization is quite a bit more than this so I'm not even sure if this is a full stop. The other thing is that I noticed that, now see if you can hear it there, <laughs> it's a noisy little it burps. Lens. It burps. <laughs> so I don't know if the Tamron does that but Sometimes I'll hear some focus noise, but not quite as the same as the Sigma. Yeah. I have used the Sigma, and even though, like you say, you don't really notice it, I've gotten good stabilization out of using it. Mm -hmm. I've taken a lot of different uh, captures with it and Stop. like it. I've used both. I just happened to decide to go ahead and I'm gonna burp it. Yeah. <laughs> and stay with that one. But that one, uh, the Sigma retails a little bit less. It's yeah, that was you know, five six hundred dollars. I think it's about four sixty. Uh, Right now, well, you I've seen it in, within that range. Yeah, about four hundred and sixty to five hundred. And uh, both of these lenses, I should say, now as far as sharpness and quality, I yeah. cannot. Um, I saw almost no. I've seen comparisons that I've read online, and and the Tamron one, I've used them side by side, Jim. Yep. And I saw little to no. It's interesting because I don't. See I love the way no that vignetting. they try to. You know, this is a ninety. That's a one hundred and eight. Ooh, one hundred and eight's got to be better than a ninety. Mm -hmm. But that's oh, well, marketing. Actually, that's one hundred and five. And the, nine, the difference between 90 millimeter and 105 is so yeah, tiny, I doubt if you would even notice It's a that. marketing thing. They're also both 2.8, f2.8. Right. But as far as sharpness and the quality of the image that you get, I doubt if anybody could tell the difference. And we're going to show that here. Why don't we go ahead and show some of okay. your images that you have taken with the with Tamron. The Tamron. Okay. So these are some of your macro pictures, photographs in here. And um, here are some that I took with the Sigma. So if I didn't tell you what lens was used, would you be able to tell? I mean, both of those do excellent results. And as I said, when I was utilizing that lens and then kind of switching between the two, I had a hard time. I had to look at the picture and the EXIF information to see which lens I used. Yep. Uh, so to me, they're both very similar. Some people don't like the noise of the Sigma. and But you know what? If you don't have the bigger dollars that it's going to cost you for this, that may be a, a less expensive investment. Yep. You're staying under $500. This one's over seven, somewhere between, I'd say, seven... 
2740 maybe even more um, so you might be able to budget a little bit it, there's still going to be great lenses like i said the other one's going to be a little noisy i guess if you're doing video with it you're going to be able to pick it up maybe if you're using the built-in micro one close to the camera right. maybe i want to also point out that now neither fred and i shoot nikon so we really can't we don't have access to a Nikon macro. This is an early version of Canon. This is a 100 millimeter. It's also f2.8. This does not have stabilization. It does have a focusing range that you can set, and which this one is uh, 0.31 to infinity or 0.49 to infinity. So it's not quite as much as the... Um, Sigma, what does that has the three settings too on right, the Tamron? Right. So that's not as much, but this is an earlier lens. I, I have used this one for ages. I had traded off my Tamron I got because I got a um, Canon uh, ring flash that mounts on this and it doesn't work on anything but the Canon lenses. This is also an extremely sharp. Um, it's a good serviceable good lens, sharp lens and yeah. if you're worried about the non-stabilization, you could put that on a tripod. Now, the newer model is stabilized. This one actually is being sold. I've seen this in uh, BHS, and it's somewhere probably about the price of the Tamron, uh, right. around seventeen hundred. The new version, the updated version that has image stabilizations, are like twelve hundred. I was gonna say I figured so, around twelve hundred or yeah, plus. Yeah, it's, it's a bit more expensive. So. Good, still a good lens. But I want to show you uh, an image. It was a, a technique that I had actually, this picture is from a dozen years ago, back um, around 2008 that I took this. This is a, a tropical orb weaver spiders. These spiders build these huge webs at night and then take them down during the day and they kind of hibernate mm -hmm. during the day. And um, this was out in bright sunshine. I used a ring flash and this non-stabilized Canon lens and there's a technique that I want to describe here real quick because this would another method to get really right. good and you're going to get a higher number of good macros that are sharp and uh, one of the big problems you have macro and Fred and I hadn't mentioned this last time is m motion right whether it's because of wind blowing the flower or the insect or the insect itself just running around we want to use a flash or even a macro ring the problem is as Fred had pointed out that a lot of beginners especially going out there will put way too much light on the, the subject it's either way too much or not enough and they're frustrated out, yeah so here's a technique that we want you to give this a try Number one, lower your ISO on your camera to ISO 100, or as low as you can go on your camera. Now we're going to use manual mode on the camera. So you want to set the camera on manual, set your aperture to f11, set your shutter speed to the highest flash sync setting, which on a couple of my cameras that's a 200th of a second, on a couple of them it's a 250th, so whatever the highest flash sync is, set that on your uh, your camera <clears throat> now you're also going to put the flash into manual mode and start about one quarter power you don't want to use full power for the flash take some test pictures at the distance that you're generally going to be working with which probably six to eight inches <clears throat> one of the things we'd mentioned that these are all around 100 millimeters there are macro lenses that are around 40, and then I think they make them in a 180 millimeter. The advantage of the 40 millimeter is that you can get closer and you have a bigger depth of field. These are kind of in between a 100 millimeter. Uh, you can get further from the subject, still get a one-to-one -one macro, but you're going to have a shallower depth of field. The 180 further back yet, but you're going to have an even shallower depth of field. And macros already has a small depth of field. So these 100 millimeter lenses, run 90 to 105, are probably ideal. By the way, the Canon, I don't know if I pointed out, that was 100 millimeter. Right, you did. So but they're all going to be pretty close to the same yeah. in that in that ranging. Now, yes, there are macros that are smaller. Mm -hmm. I my one of my first kit lenses. That I got with my first Canon was 
uh, a one-to-one macro of all things. I, it blew me away. I haven't yep. seen anything since those yeah. things. We want you to make sure that you understand yeah. the difference between close focus and macro. Right, because there's a lot of there are uh, close a lot of lenses, lenses that call themselves that call macro, but right. they're not really true macro. Because they'll say one to one on them. Yeah. So getting back to this, what okay. you want to do is fire off some images and then check your exposure. Once your exposure is dialed in, I mean, you might have to change the one quarter to one eighth power or maybe a little bit higher. But the advantage of that is that flash is putting out a one two thousand, three thousand, maybe one five thousandths of a second. So any movement of the flower or the insect will probably be frozen more than likely. Or any movement that you're doing if you're hand holding. Um, and uh, one other thing I wanted to point out that if you got sunlight, that we had mentioned these in the previous podcast too, these pocket scrims, which are 10 bucks, I believe you get these Amazon. We'll put links down here. But imagine, and they make one that comes down like this that you poke your camera through that'll hold it out. But I didn't see any that were sold directly by Amazon. They're around $12, $15. But you just do this, like this. This will block the sun from coming in. It's easy enough to hold, and yet it'll soften the light coming from your flash. And I played around with this yesterday. I've got some images I can show you here that I did with that technique. Even though it was overcast yesterday, and really there was no sun to block, but it showed it did soften the light a bit. So give that technique a try, and let us know what you think. And again, it's not about, hey, flash is better than than uh, LED. It comes down to, after a while of playing with it, you have a go-to. Yep. And Jim may find that, because I've used, well, I still have a ring flash that I still use. The other thing. But I like, I'm going to experiment by putting the flash on this. On that. But in order to do that, what you're going to have to do, I'll take this off, so it's just, it's got a quarter 20. Because I'm using my hot shoe here to put the flash on here, I've got a little hot shoe adapter, and now I'm going to have to have a PC cord, which is a right to go back into the camera, to yeah. plug into the camera to fire the flash. And uh, so make sure that you, if you do this, turn right. off the ETTL. You don't want that. You want manual flash. Right. But to get it to even go, you're going to have to connect it because this is what they call a cold connection. Yes, it's cold shoe connection. It does not allow any. Right. current to go through it correct so, but it's, it's a handy little gizmo yeah and you and can do a lot of things with very it very flexible you take this and it can go in uh, any number of directions and it just tightens up with one little knob down here and then these to tighten it to keep it from very swinging good. all right well that's about all i got if you've got any uh, last words to uh, just go out and try it the nice thing yeah. about this is since if you're still stuck at home <laughs> because of yeah. the virus you got plenty of things i'm sure out in your backyard you can find all the right. pictures that fred and i took were local yes and, very much so. Uh, so but i do have one last thing yes go ahead um if spiders don't have eyelids and they can't close their eyes how do you know they're sleeping that's a good point i think it was because he was snoring <laughs> ah Okay. I thought maybe you'd tell me their little tongues are hanging out while they're sleeping. Well, yeah, he was drooling. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you get spider drool. Okay, let's if you just... Can capture that, we want to see a picture. Yeah, of that would be amazing. <laughs> all right, well, that's all I got. I think... I think Please, it's... share some of your yes. macro shots with us. And, oh, one thing I want to have, if I'm, I may have the last word here. I'm going to remind you again to go out subscribe to the photobug youtube channel i have a free ebook on everything you ever wanted to know about macro 24 pages of all kinds of techniques for macro focus stacking i mean it's got everything in there and including equipment and even ways you don't need a macro lens to get macro you can take an ordinary lens and reverse it could show how that's or done. put tubes on it or tubes yeah yeah by the way you can use extension tubes on macro lenses and get even closer uh, which I did on some of the pictures that I had showed earlier. So just go out there, subscribe to the YouTube channel, 
let me know that you want the uh, ebook and I'll send you a link where you can download it for free. Excellent last word.